when do you use a class with methods and when do you use functions in the module. If you pick wrong, your code will be more complicated than needed, which makes it harder to maintain, leading to bugs that potentially accidentally shoot rockets at other countries, leading to World War III, and in the worst case, one country develops a weapon that creates a supermassive black hole that swallows up the entire universe, and then we'll never get that reboot of Babylon 5. I'm sorry. Worst case scenario. Today I'm going to share how I decide between functions versus classes and help you improve your code. So I can finally watch the Shadow Vorlon War with modern CGI. So thank you in advance for watching this entire video and actually applying what I'm going to show you. If you want to become better overall at fixing problems in your code, I have a free workshop on code diagnosis. If you want to join, go to arion.codes slash diagnosis. It's about half an hour, teaches you a three, three. It teaches you a three-factor framework to help you review your code more effectively. And I actually show you how it works by using production code. So iron.codes slash diagnosis to get access for free. The link is also in the description of this video. Before talking about how you decide when to use a function versus when you use a class, we need to better understand what the difference is. First, functions. Functions take input arguments, then do something and then they return a result. And you can then take that result and pass it to other functions. Functional languages like Haskell even allow you to pass functions to functions or let functions return other functions. It can get pretty complicated. But what it comes down to is that your whole program is organized around how data flows and what you do with it. Functions are action focused. Object oriented programming languages like Java are different. At the core, it's all about structuring information. So you have variables that are grouped into objects, which are part of other objects. So you get a whole hierarchy that way. You can even use inheritance to extend the definition of these object structures. And together, all of the objects represent the state of the applications and methods modify that state. So object oriented programs with classes are state focused. So how do you decide when to use which? Well, use functions when your code is action focused and use classes when your code is state focused. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Okay, maybe I should actually explain what that means. Let's take a look. And I'm going to start by an example where I think functions make the most sense. So I have a very simple example application here that analyzes some data. So I have a CSV file here. That's actually the result of the Stack Overflow developer survey. And I have a simple script that analyzes the CSV file by looking at the um, most common jobs as well as the most common programming languages that have been used. If you take a look at how this has been set up, you see that we have a couple of functions. So this counts the cumulative appearances of a certain value in a particular column. Uh, we have a show frequencies function that takes a counter and that prints the frequencies. We have a function that shows all the answers, all the possible answers that are within the data set. We have a function to analyze the frequencies that calls these other functions. And then we have a main function that opens the file and then again, calls the other functions. So here you see, this is really action focused. We wanted to do things in sequence. We don't really care about how everything is structured. We really care about the flow. So we start by loading the data, then we do an analysis, then we do a second analysis and we want to print that information. So it's really a typical example of a program where we're mainly concerned with actions, with the flow of information. And you see that functions here are actually a really good way of doing this because, well, it's a pretty short file. It's quite logical to organize the code into functions here. If you were to use classes, you would probably end up with a God class that contains everything and then these things would be methods. And we wouldn't really have instance variables because, well, the example doesn't really concern itself with state. So with classes, this, this would actually be harder to read. I think with functions, it's much simpler. When I run the script, we see quite a few interesting things. For example, that third of the people is fully remote and um, about only 11.7% is in person. And of course, that's also due to COVID. I'd be interested to see what the difference is going to be with these numbers when we ask the same question in 2023. But since it is currently 2023, at least when I'm recording it, we're gonna have to wait a while until we get those numbers. Second thing is the language that people work with. So we see at the top, we have JavaScript, HTML, SQL, and uh, Python is also up there quite a bit. 
but JavaScript is by far the popular. So I should probably change my channel to use JavaScript. Although there's already like a bunch of different channels that are uh, JavaScript focused. Still though, Python is one of the most popular languages as well. So we have nothing to complain about. Personally, nowadays I tend to go more for functional solutions than for object oriented solutions. I feel the code is simpler overall. Also, if I write functions, I find that they're easier to test, especially if I try to turn these functions into pure functions, which means that they're um, working independently of the rest of the code and not modifying global state or anything. And then it's also quite easy to write unit tests for them. So that's one advantage of not going for a um, state-based approach, which is what object-oriented programming is, but really going for a flow action-based approach. Because in the end, that's also sort of what a test does. It, it feeds something to a program and it observes the result to verify that it's actually doing what it's supposed to be doing. So typically, if I can, I'm going to use functions. If I have to, I'm going to use classes. So here I have another example where actually using classes makes more sense because this is more about the structure of things and not so much about the flow of information. So what do we have here? Well, I have a couple of classes. So one is an enumerated types, not really a class, but it's a type representation that in Python we use a class for. We have a transaction. In this case, I'm using a tuple. So that's another example of using structured information. And that's why Python is so nice because we have these type of structures like tuples and dictionaries to also help us with structuring information. We have a custom balance error, which is also a class, but most importantly, we have a bank account which is a class that gets an initial balance and that maintains a list of transactions. Uh, it's the transaction history. And then we have methods like deposit and withdraw that modify the bank account. And there's a couple of other things like we can transfer amounts between bank accounts. We can check whether the balance is sufficient um, and a couple of properties that are helpful when you when we're dealing with bank accounts. So on the main function, I create a couple of bank accounts. I withdraw some money, I deposit some money, I do a transfer, and then I print some information. And you can see the result of that right here. And the reason why classes are useful here is that bank account represents state. And because we have a class, we can create objects of that class and we could have, for example, multiple bank accounts. If you were to solve this with functions, it would be way more complicated because, well, bank accounts are state focused. They're not action focused. So that's one case where object oriented programming makes a lot of sense. You will also find quite often that an object oriented approach works well if you're dealing with modeling real world concepts and you need some representation of real world things in your program. Like let's say you build a real estate system, you might have houses and buyers and uh, mortgages and other, well, mortgages are not really real, like not physical, but they're like things that exist. Well, that doesn't make any sense. Anyway, this type of program is more suitable for a state-based approach, for an object-oriented approach. I mean, imagine if you wanted to create like 10 or 20 bank accounts, you would have needed like tons of variables if you were to follow a functional approach. So this makes way more sense. And then of course you could decide to extend on these classes by using inheritance. Although typically I would avoid using very deep inher inheritance hierarchies like I also mentioned in lots of my other videos. And uh, you wanna be careful, especially with object oriented programming to really um, judiciously, judiciously apply design patterns and principles. And I did a bunch of videos about that. For example, here's a video at the top where I talk about the solid design principles. It's already quite an old video, uh, but it's still uh, quite relevant, especially for object-oriented programming. Now, like I said, and that's the nice thing about Python is that we don't have to pick between functions and classes. You already see that in the classes example, that, well, we do have classes here, like uh, this class on, and particularly the bank account class. But we're also using tuples for simple structures like a transaction, which is just a type, a date, and an amount. And we also use functions like the main function here. So using a careful combination of these things makes a lot of sense in most cases. And that's what's nice about Python is that we have some flexibility to do so. We're not uh, like with Java tied to everything having to be a class. We can 
uh, introduce functions whenever we feel that is necessary or most useful. It's one of the reasons why I like using Python a lot. So it's a brief overview of the difference between functions and classes. I hope it helps you pick the one that fits better with what you need. So if the program that you're writing is more focused with the flow of information like processing data in a sequence, then using a more functional approach is going to be better. And it's also going to make it easier to write tests for it. If it's really more focused on state, like the bank accounts example, or you have collections of objects that need to be structured in some way, and you have a few methods that modify those objects, then a class-based approach will typically be better. But don't hesitate to experiment with this and try different approaches, try different combinations of approaches, because ultimately that's going to help you understand these topics better and will lead to a better result in the end. So if you're using classes in your program, then I highly recommend that you start using data classes as they're awesome. And I did a video recently about data class. You can watch that right here. Thanks for watching and see you next week.